Could some illegal psychoactive drugs help people suffering from severe trauma? It sounds almost heretical to suggest it. And yet, 40 years ago, hallucinogenic drugs like acid were prescribed by doctors. Now, a trial in the US appears to show the partially successful use of ecstasy and MDMA to treat people with post-traumatic stress. And Britain psychiatrists in a conference today will have to decide whether there's a future in it. David Fuller's report contains some strobe lighting. A conference room in Liverpool, an address to the esteemed Royal College of Psychiatrists, an unlikely location for a psychedelic happening. But that's kind of what this is, the first presentation on psychedelic drug therapy to a mainstream psychiatric conference in four decades. Congratulations, because uh, I think this is a, a landmark event and you're all part of it. The star attraction, American psychiatrist Michael Mithoffer revealing the results of his trial treating patients with MDMA or ecstasy. Before it became widely known as a clubbing drug, MDMA was first used in therapy, mostly relationship counselling, like this session in America in the 1980s. It is a drug that allows people to be free of their fear and to face up to what bothers them. You're a nice man. I like you. I love you. Once it escaped the therapist rooms, spread to the clubs, and people died, it was made illegal. Research stopped. Until now. A small number of trials are starting up again around the world. Michael Mithoffers is the first to be completed. And the organisers of this presentation today have asked him here to show his results because they want to see similar trials starting in the UK. What this event symbolises today is the first time in over 40 years that these drugs have been discussed in a mainstream medical conference. This is an exciting time because it's shedding the past and the controversial history of these drugs and allowing us to look at them with evidence-based, clear, objective, scientific eyes. And the evidence that Michael Mithoffer is proposing is very impressive. Instead of relationship counselling, he's been treating victims of post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Half are given MDMA and counselling, the MDMA to allow them to relive the traumatic experience without fear. The other half were given a placebo and counselling. The results were uh, very impressive reductions in PTSD symptoms. Um, at the end, in the placebo group, 85% of people still met the criteria for post-traumatic stress disorder. In the MDMA group, only 15% still met the criteria. Is that a cure? That's a cure, yes. The researchers are keen to point out that this was a relatively small study and the results have not yet been officially published. Aren't you making this drug seem extremely attractive and we know that it has been linked with deaths in the past? The fact that we used it safely in this controlled setting with very carefully screened subjects does not mean that it's safe in other types of settings. So it's important not for people not to jump to conclusions. This is early and very encouraging but preliminary data and we need much more research. And his patients, all of whom had no success with conventional treatment, were very happy with the results. I had recurrent dreams since I was a little kid. It's like I'd be walking through a house and the lights would turn out and then this force would overwhelm me. After the MDMA, um, I fought it once and it never happened again. There are two other trials running at the moment in Switzerland and Israel. Ben and others would like the UK to be next but the government's dismissal of a report by their own Drugs Advisory Council to downgrade ecstasy shows that they face an uphill struggle to get a trial licensed here. It's very difficult to do these projects because of the government's objections and the classification of the drugs. Um, we need to look at these drugs uh, with objective medical eyes um, and we need to take into account that they, they, they need to be used with caution, but we, we mustn't let government policy dictate medical research. That, that is unethical. Talk of placebos and randomised control trials may be a long way from the drug's current perception among the public, but the scientists know that their chances of success in continuing their research depend on keeping the debate as boring as possible.